And that leads me to a cultural theme that's been on my mind about how we got here. It seems to me that something that's ha happened in American culture over the years is that we've taken it as a given in our sort of national ethos that what it's all about is for me as an individual to have the most fulfilling life I possibly can have. And if I'm not happy, that's problem number one. And I need to work on that, whether that means getting more money or spending more time talking to a therapist or becoming a better artist or meditating harder or whatever it is. And the thing that struck me as the years went by was this discovery of the deep satisfaction of service. And that for me, it's, it's the answer, <laughs> you know, that, that there's so much joy in service, as you say, it's hard work and frustration like there is in any work, but when, the, what, when you notice that you've done something that actually made a difference, it's it really, as far as I'm concerned, I guess it might be something we agree, there isn't enough money in the world to match the satisfaction of that. I mean, it's an extraordinary paradox, right? The best way to make yourself happy and to be fulfilled is to do things for other people, is to commit yourself to a cause greater than yourself, right? And, but it's, it's sort of hard to rationalize, right? Because you're like, I'm, how am I going to get if I'm giving away? Mm. But it really is the way that it works. And I, you know, I mean, I frankly, I mean, I can't wait for my next opportunity to serve. Um, I remember walking out of the White House on the 19th and just, you know, thinking that there wasn't anything I was going to be able to do that was, that was going to be this Satisfying. I mean, and it's 20 hour, it's the most I've ever worked. It's like 20 hour days for the least amount of pay. Um, and it just, like, I remember having this feeling of, like, I peaked too early. What am I going to do for the next 30 <laughs> years? Like, this is awful. Um, but it, I mean, it really is, it, it can't be overstated, like, just how thrilling it is to be in that building to, to you know, have the president send you a letter and say, what are we doing about this? And then be able to respond and do something about it, right? Not just for that person, but for the thousands of other people like that person. That's amazing how that's, I could, I mean, I wasn't working in the White House, but when I was working on the Obama campaign, it was, that was almost the same phrase I would use. It was like the hardest, highest stress, worst paid work I've ever done in my life. Seven days a week. Wait, they... They paid you? Right. Oh. How did, I didn't get paid. Did you I get thought paid? when we brought you on the campaign, the sure. deal was you paid us. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say they paid me a lot. Um, and you could not have torn me away from that experience. You could have offered me private jet tour around the world with five-star hotels. It wouldn't have acquired a second thought. And it was because... And this gets back to the cynicism about the rig system. And I want to say this to people who would not have voted for uh, President Obama. And I hope we have some folks from the other side in here, because I think it's important for, for this kind of communication that we're talking about. So you might be opposed to everything that President Obama s stood for, but I can tell you he's one of the finest people I've ever encountered in my entire life. And I saw him under conditions of great stress, as we all did, when he could have been cutting corners. He could have done the shady stuff that a lot of people assume is always happening. Never once, um, never once. And you're right, it's, and so lousy, lousy pay. <laughs> terrible, terrible hours, horrible stress. I mean, I, I aged like five or 10 years. <laughs> no, I mean, you see it in the president, right? Yeah. Every, every president, right? You always see they show him like the before yeah. and the after, and it's like the dark hair and the, and the gray hair. Yeah. But I mean, it happens with the staff too, I mean, yeah. you know. No, it took me like, like months to, to get over yeah. that campaign. Yeah, I mean, you know, a number of my former colleagues and I, we joke, people talk about the freshman 15, we talk about the White House 10. It's <laughs> it's like, just... you know. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of these issues I think we've been wrestling with since the founding of the country. And a lot of what we see now is a lot of these things coming to a head. Uh, either because they were never really resolved, and maybe they're not supposed to be resolved. Maybe we're supposed to go on debating some of this stuff. But it seems to me that a lot of these issues have been with us for a long time. 